Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here to share with you a little analogy or parable, so to speak. That's kind of a, an ugly one, but, but you'll get the point. Have you ever known anyone, or have you ever had a problem with roaches? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you this. We know how much we don't want to be in anybody's house that has any, right? We sure don't want any in our house. Anyway, well, what I'm saying all that to say is when you come into a house, someone's house or your house, you know, I won't tell. If it's dark, you know them boogers are running all over the place. But you notice as soon as you turn that light on and it's no longer dark, they scatter, don't they? Oh, they all run into their little hiding cubby holes. And oh, I, I, it's just bizarre to watch. It's nasty, but it's bizarre to watch. Well, I'm still on that point from the other message that I talked about. That's how we are when we are caught with our hand in the cookie jar. I want to share something with you. This is an unsaved mindset, and this is the way I was before I gave my heart to the Lord. I had a next-door neighbor named Gladys Jackson, and the reason I name her is because I love her dearly. I appreciate the role she played in my life and my family's life, and she and I are very close friends. She was my next door neighbor. My parents moved from one state to the other, and here we are right next door to her, where she had just moved from one state to the other and landed on that block right next door to us. And they were there about maybe a few months before we were. It wasn't that long. Now, here's the comical part. When she got around us, she was always trying to win us to the Lord, our little heathen family. I couldn't stand for that woman to be around me. I mean, listen to that. I want you to hear how you can tell your temperature, where you stand spiritually if you're not really sure. Here's a good sign, really good uh, gauge to go by. This was my attitude. Number one, I wasn't trying to walk with the Lord. Number two, I wasn't trying to get to know him. Number three, I wasn't trying to hear about it either. And my next door neighbor was a persistent little something. I mean, every time, oh, Pat, you ought to give that voice to the Lord. And I would roll my eyes in, in my mind. I wouldn't disrespect her in her face. <laughs> but privately, I was like, that woman, get off. Oh, I was, oh, oh. You know. You know how we used to mix a lot of cuss words with all that stuff? Yeah. Well, I would wish she would just get out of my face and go somewhere. I didn't want to hear all that church talk. Then she would try to win my parents to the Lord. They didn't want to hear it. This is really funny. This is in my book that still blows my mind. Now, what I want you to hear is how things change when a person is ready to receive the Lord who's been gnawing at them for years. I would sit there. She would come over and help my parents at times. And when she would come over, I would want to slip out the back door. I did not want to be around that woman. I didn't want her to say hello to me. That is, I'm serious. She just got on my nerves. Hello. Hmm. I didn't like her. Didn't want to be around her. Didn't want to hear her mouth. I just didn't want to be with her. I didn't want her in the house. Well, let me tell you. She got to praying for our little heathen family. <laughs> I was not raised in church. I guess you can tell by the way I talk. Um, I got saved in 1981 when I was 27 
years old. I am 62 and I have never wickedly departed from the Lord. I have fallen, yes, but I have not determined to walk away from God. Never. So listen to this. Before I was saved, I didn't want to hear, didn't want to be around her, didn't I just, I didn't like her. I didn't like her, I, I didn't even like her family much. I was just like, ooh, those people. <laughs> and I didn't think much of church or church people because I had had some experiences in the past with church people claimed in, 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 in certain words and then in other words, cuss words, they showed that they weren't all that sanctified as they, you know, anyway. And you know how we start looking at people like, yeah, right, and you're saved anyway. Well, that was my attitude towards this woman. And I didn't even know her well. I just, you know, presumed that she would turn out to be the same way. Well, she told me she was praying. And again, I didn't want to hear it. It was very annoying. And I noticed I was sitting up at that nightclub. And I started listening to the conversations. Listen to this. The nonsense they had been talking for the seven years that I went to that club, that I hung out there, started sounding stupider, dumber, more ridiculous, more idiotic. I was like, all these people are doing is talking loud and saying nothing. Now, check this out, now I'm starting to get turned off to them. Not that I didn't like them, but I was tired of the rhetoric, the street nonsense. Anyway, as time went on, I started losing my desire to hang out there anymore. I felt like I was hanging out with a bunch of empty people in a rut. And I'm an empty person. And I'm in a rut. So how are we going to get out of this rut? When they're in a rut, I'm in a rut. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Why am I still here? It's got to be something more than this. Nothingness. And I literally got bored and, and tired of it. Well, I went to my neighbor. She was coming out of her yard. And I said, uh, hi, um, Miss Jackson, um, uh, 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 can I go to church with you next Sunday? <laughs> I'm gonna be cool. I remember how I felt fighting. It was like a tug of war. No, I don't want to do this. I need to do this. I don't want to do this. I need to do this. But I approached her. And then she told me that they had a new pastor. She had been telling us that, that they had had a new pastor. And I finally decided to go with her. She was beaming, of course, and I was afraid she would gloat, which would definitely get on my last nerve. But she didn't gloat. She was cool. We went to church, and yes, I was very, very, very uncomfortable because I was very, very, very unsaved. <laughs> and you know how it is, dark and light. <laughs> okay roaches. So here I am sitting, I'm the roach, and I'm sitting in this marvelous light. And these people are singing and praising and clapping, and, and I'm like, okay, okay, get through with the music. You know, I didn't get it. I didn't understand all that. I just thought that was just unnecessary exercise, you know, just, just excess verbiage, so to speak, you know, accompanied by music. And I didn't quite get all of it. But here was the thing that got me. Every single time I sat in that church, I cried. 
It make me so mad. What am I sitting up here crying about? I ain't saying nothing that deep. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm crying. And I'm hiding, got my coat on, and I'm hiding under it so nobody can see all the tears and boo running down my face. Well, I didn't understand. I was under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Lord was wooing me and drawing me, and everything in my heart wanted what was being preached in the pulpit. But everything in my flesh was fighting it because it was so difficult for me to believe that something could be that good. After all of the disillusionment I had experienced. We get cynical and it gets harder and harder. So here I am. <laughs> every time I turn around, oh, can I go to church with you? Now it wasn't every Sunday. It might be one Sunday and I go get prayer. But I tell them, look, I'm just getting prayer. I'm not getting saved. Okay, that's fine. And I cry again. And it got to the point where after about, I'm saying this for a reason, so I hope you hang with me on this. I'm not trying to drag this out. But it got to the point where I started wanting to go more and more. And sometimes I backpedal and say, no, 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 this stuff can't be for real. And then I noticed a family. This is what got me more than anything between the preach word and the family. There was a family called the Halls. <sighs> I'm going to be cool. And this family exuded a peace. They, they were so genuine. I could see it. I could feel it. It was just all over them. And their daughter was a piano player. Her name was Michelle Hall. Later on, she married and became Michelle Love. No, no relations to me. Her husband just happened to have the same last name I did. And she married a wonderful man. And he married a wonderful woman. And there was something about Michelle. This was before she married. There was something about Michelle that drew my heart. It was like I saw nothing but love. When I looked at her, I saw no condemnation. I saw no judgment. I never felt like she looked at me like I was something weird or a freak. I did feel that way about some of the other church people. We have to process through that because people will be people. But I never felt that with her. And it wasn't Gladys Jackson, it wasn't the pastor, it wasn't the other people, it was the halls that gripped me. And I saw something real I never thought I would see. And there was a peace. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, Gladys Jackson's prayers got me in. But the halls made up my mind. And I decided to try this because I wanted what they had. And I could see it all over them. And let me tell you this, you guys. Sometimes people don't have to preach it to you. Whew. They don't have to beat, it, beat you over the head with a Bible. But they could be so real, so loving, so peaceful, so kind, and so accepting. That it makes you want what they have because you know you've never met anybody that had that. And you say, it's possible if they have it, maybe I could too. I finally gave my heart to the Lord. Now listen to this. I want you to hear the difference of my attitude. And now I get saved. I ask the Lord to fill me with his Holy Spirit. Ah. There's the key. Change of nature. Change of heart set. Mindset. Everything starts to change. It's a process, but it's a lot quicker than you expect in a lot of areas. And what ended up happening was I fell in love. I couldn't get enough 
of my next door neighbor. Hi, Gladys. What you doing? <laughs> I guess what? I read the Bible and I realized this means that and that means this. Gladys, what should I read tonight in the Bible? I bugged that woman so bad. <laughs> and she and I would talk. She would come over. She'd call me and she'd, she was right next door. She would call me and she said, Pat, uh, I'm getting ready. Now, my mother had gotten her own place and my father was in the hospital. So all this is happening while I'm in the house by myself. And the Lord just said it so that Gladys and I could bond. And she became my spiritual mentor. Now, she started sharing things with me. I never would have expected her to share. And it made me understand that you can be real with God. You can be transparent with God. You don't have to run to people for your comfort. You can go right to God because all people can do is listen. But they can't comfort you, baby. Oh, no. Once you experience the comfort power of God, can't nobody touch that. It's just not going to happen. So why keep going to people when you know you got a straight shot? <laughs> got a straight connection. And I love going to God when I'm hurting. I know he's the only one that can heal my hurt and remove my anger. He's the only one who can do that. And he can do it in seconds. I don't have to wait to get over something. I can just go to him, Lord, take this anger out. And I learned that. Because my mentor, Gladys Jackson, who used to be my annoying next door neighbor, became my loving friend, a beloved friend. And she taught me to lean on God rather than man. Even though she was always available, she still taught me to lean on God, ask God questions, Ask him to show me scripture. Lead me to scripture. Ask him to, to explain to me and open up my understanding if I wasn't clear on something. I tell you that the key people that, that played such a, a role in my life to help me get to know God. I love being around the saints, you guys. And yes, some of them can get on your last rusty nerve. But God's grace is sufficient, and so is his love. And what we can't do, we can through him. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And he will strengthen you to love beyond your ability, baby. And forgive beyond that, too, big time. So, I... You know, I always say, I say all that to say, check your temperature, check your temperature, okay? I mean, Gladys used to crack me up because I know her husband used to wish I would get off that phone, <laughs> but I'm telling you, she played a major role in me getting rooted and grounded in the Lord and in the Word. The halls played a role and me taking the plunge. The pastor played a role. His name was Pastor Cushman. He played a role in the Holy Spirit convicting me every time. And then when I got saved and he would preach, I would get all these revelations popping off in my head while he was preaching. He was an amazing preacher. I, I, I got so much depth from this group of people. And I'm telling you right now, I love being around Gladys Jackson. When I would sit with her, the love that she had from God would be spewing all out of her. her it was almost like an aroma. It would fill the room. And I would just love being there, feeling all that love. I, 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 it was like I just couldn't get enough of it. And then one day I experienced God's love for myself. I was getting it from her second hand. That was amazing to feel it, filling up my house. But then to get it from God, it was a whole different love there, baby. It was like something from out of space. But I tell you what, he solidified me. 
And he used people to get me there. And that's why I love being around the saints. And what I love about God is I can fail and run to him with my dirty diaper. I'm saying it figuratively. I can run to him with my dirty diaper and my nose full of, you know, all messy and stinky and dirty and ask God to clean me up. Because God knows I don't want to live in sin. But we all fall short of the glory of God. And we all fail from time to time miserably. And in those miserable times is when we get to see the most abundant grace and the most abundant love and mercy God has for us. Because we're not playing games with him. We're for real in our walk with God and in our failure. So anyway, I'm going to stop because I know I'm going a long time. But I beg you to get to know God. He is the best friend. He won't tell your business all on the street. He will cover you. God is love. And love covers a multitude of sin. He knew I was selfish. And he worked it. Worked on that selfishness. Worked on my selfishness while I was taking care of my father until he died. We always have layers, like, uh, like layers of an onion, the way my niece Peggy says it. We have layers, and we are a continual work in progress. Now we can have the work done hard, or we can have it done easy. Cooperate, and it's a whole lot easier, baby. Hook up with God. Get to know him. And stay close to him so that you don't start running and hiding and slipping and falling and, 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 and then not wanting to even be around the saints. Don't get into that trick bag. Please don't do that. Satan wants to isolate you anyway. So when you get away from the saints, you know what you're doing? You're like out in nature when you see the animal programs and the lion is, 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 is on the prowl. And here's a herd. And he's checking out. He's looking for the weak. He's looking for the old, the sick, the lame, or the, or the dodo birds that wander away from the pack because they're looking at all the little goodies in nature and they're not paying attention. Only the ones that become isolated are the ones they can get to the easiest. Don't let Satan do that to you. Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Simple Simon says, well, may I? Well, guess what? You're giving him permission. And yes, he may when you isolate yourself. It's like an open invitation. You put a sign on your head. It says, stupid, stupid, stupid. Come eat me up. Come destroy me. Come ruin my life. I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. You stay close to the saints, whether you're on top of your game or at the very bottom. And you get counsel while you're at the bottom so you can get back up on top where you belong. Amen? Don't backslide. Don't step away from the pack. Stay close up under Jesus. He's got you covered. He knows your weak stuff. He knows where you're weak. He ain't embarrassed. Ain't no need in you being embarrassed. Okay? God loves you, baby. That's the best love you will ever get in your life and throughout eternity. Hang with him. He's got you covered when you're smelling good and when you're kind of rank. He knows how to clean you up too. And he'll get his hands dirty cleaning you and me. God bless you.